from the Zip Cave in Huntington, West Virginia. I have come here to chew bubblegum and kick ass. Welcome to the Geek Zip Podcast. I'm all out of bubblegum. Comic books, superheroes, Marvel, DC, sci-fi, TV, music, wrestling, and so much more. That's no moon. Submit your questions and or comments to geekzippodcast at gmail.com. Where are you? Here. Now. We rescue a world from mysticism and tyranny. And usher in a future brighter than anything we can imagine. Here's Ryan Zip and Chris Chin. Oh, Justin Timberlake debuts new song, Dude Selfish. At an intimate Memphis gig. I don't give a shit. That's the kind of news we should be covering. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> no, it isn't. <laughs> uh, absolutely Dude, wait till not. you hear this new JT song. That's, that's not what I think when I get up in the mornings. Is I gotta check out the new JT song. Yeah, you do, dude. No, no, I don't. Dude, I don't think I've seen that bear behind you before. The bear is new. Um, this is Bat Bear. He was sitting over there actually next to your seat on the couch. And uh, I moved him because I like grabbed him. And was it looks cool. Him. Looks like a nice little cute co-host. Better than me. Of course, it's got my my brown belt that I have from karate with the black uh, black or the um, stripe. Black belt stripe. I got Yoda behind me, dude. I got that a few years back for Christmas from my brother Jesse. So obviously his cow and his cape have been lost to the sands of time. But I bought this for Sammy Z when he was first born. This is when um, Batman uh, or the Dark Knight was was big, and it did it did talk. I'm glad you did didn't you hear get, that. Like, a heat play. Listen, I'm glad you. I'm Batman. So yeah, I had that. I had to say that in the store, in front of about thirty people, so they could put the voice on here. Oh yeah, that's cool. I. Uh, it's I funny. The workers that. were like, usually they put, you know, I love you or so. I'm like, fuck you. So what did it say? Just to be clear, I'm Bat Bear. <laughs> so instead, of, I'm Batman. It's a oh. bad bear. You get it? They're like, they're like, aren't you supposed to say something like, I love you, son? Yeah, that's what they're, uh, yeah, they were like, you know, they like to, we, we love you as your parents. And I looked at them and went, okay, I'm bad bear. And they just fucking mm. went, oh, you're one of those people. Okay. It's a good thing you didn't get a Heath Ledger Joker bear. That would have been scary, dude. I was watching some of him. They the had day. that. They had they had those, and I was I was I considered getting one for myself, but didn't. <laughs> so there's that. So well, I was I so to... I was right about the fucking Emmys, right? So well, I don't know. We must have just got fucked on that story, I guess. <laughs> well, I guess they, yeah. I was trying to figure it out. I, I guess couldn't it figure it out. The twelfth or the fifteenth or something. Because <laughs> with the, that was before the our show, the sunny people presented. But all the stories I saw were for last week and made it seem like yeah. it was, that's crazy. That's weird. I don't fuck the Emmys anyway. Fuck television. Yeah, it had pretty low. Uh, <coughs> Nobody low cares. Audience. Nobody cares. Nobody cares. I'm going to turn this down a little bit. There we go. Get, you, get my whole forehead in there. Okay. All right. Now I had to be remote because of the snow. Yes, um, it is the Geek Zip oh, Podcast. that's why you said your shirt was appropriate. Now I get it. Get it? I uh, thought you meant like something <laughs> happened in wrestling. No. <laughs> I'm wearing it because there's fucking three feet of snow on the ground and the roads are shit and it's really cold. Uh, it is the Geek Zip Podcast. Ryan Zip coming at you from the Zip Cave, Huntington, West Virginia. Christian is coming at us from Lewis Manor out in Spring Valley, about uh, 10 minutes from me, but uh, probably about an hour and a half from me if he tried to get over here today. Because, like I said, there is a great amount of snow on the ground, and I know that the nation is apparently suffering from uh, fucking day after tomorrow shit. Um, yeah. Well, I got a long driveway, so it's hard for me yeah. to even get out without shoveling. Yeah, you, like, originally you were originally you were on the fence with it, right? And you were like, you were like, I think I'm gonna come. And I was like, well, you well, know, I, I thought about it because this uh, we had like uh, 
a little backhoe in the backyard where they were they're digging out where the concrete's falling in and the steps to the basement. Uh huh. So they had like a little backhoe with treads on it, and they kind of drove that out of the yard. Oh, okay. You gonna get out in of the it? Driveway. And you, so you were gonna get in it and plow, plow the driveway. That was your plan. No, I was hoping that the treads were wide enough for a car, but they were not. I still would have had to shovel so quite you were a just bit. Go, you were just going to follow the treads, so yeah. that's, that's what it was. So, but people, yeah. so so like none of your relatives have come and gone, like since since the snow. Not since uh, yesterday's snow. Hmm. I guess that. I mean, I mean that makes sense. I guess. I mean, we had it. We had it pretty pretty. Uh, my dad had it pretty shoveled. Before yesterday's snow. You are fucking sad, bro. Uh, he didn't even ask sad. me. I didn't even know he did it, dude. You are and not working. Crazy. You don't do shit. You're a 40-year-old man, and your goddamn fucking 65-year-old dad is out there shoveling snow. You should be ashamed of yourself. It. What you can ashamed. I say? I, I'm I ashamed. I feel ashamed, dude. I feel bad. <laughs> There's nothing I can do about it, though, so hey, why well, feel bad about it? As long as you're ashamed. You don't have to feel bad. You just have to be ashamed. <laughs> I'd be happy to help him, but I don't. I mean, we only have one pair of boots. I mean, it's not like I've been out <laughs> shoveling snow. So, I mean, I can't talk a whole bunch of shit. I've been, I've barely gone out. Um, all right. So let's, uh, let's talk Turkey. Uh, don't forget, join us online through social media on our Facebook channel, on Instagram, I think we, we did have a Twitter account. I don't, I never check it. Um, and, uh, so you can follow us on there. Podomatic.com forward slash geeks at podcast. That's P O D O M A T I C.com forward slash geeks at podcast. All one word. And, uh, we will be happy to make you a geek with us. So, um, we got a good show for you today. Got a lot of stuff to get through, but you know how we do it first. We talk about our weeks. And how we what we've been doing? Did you did you get over to see Godzilla minus one? No, my family uh, went, but I didn't want to. I didn't want to have to do all the reading. What was, what was your? Oh oh, it's actually it's it's captioned, right? Okay, so it's I, I thought they dub it. I don't know. I think it's subtitled. I'm not sure. I, I, didn't I thought it'd be. I mean, like Shin Godzilla was dubbed when I saw it, so I I don't know. I, maybe. Uh, what did your family say about it? They said, "What did they say? Thoughts?" They liked it. They liked the humans. Yeah, yeah, the dude, the, the I'm telling you, what I saw of the human story was incredible. I mean, it's like, of course, I'm thinking about it. I've never really seen a bad, you know, foreign film of that era. You know what I mean? So it's like, because that, that part of the world, that was a shitty time. Uh, I'm talking about like Hiroshima and wars and all that shit and that's what that's that's what yeah. it, that's, that's what it that, doesn't get much worse than that dude, dude i mean they, <laughs> they went through hell um there's no doubt about it, it. and then you got godzilla time. on top of that yeah exactly it's like oh great great that's what i do if i saw godzilla coming in post-war japan i'd be like great that's all i'd say because that's all you can say <laughs> my computer updated and now it uh gives me email notifications again it used to not. It, it, I oh did that for God. a while. My computer would never stop away. doing it if I got email notifications on my computer. It would never stop dinging. It would just be like, ding, 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 <laughs> ding, ding. Well, I don't, I don't, it doesn't make a noise. It just pops up at the bottom of the screen, fortunately. That's even worse. I do mute that stuff, though. Uh, I'm still playing Spider-Man. I'm, still? Uh, Dr. Ock, he turned bad, dude. That yeah. sinister came out. Yeah, yeah. You're, it's you're getting crazy. close. You're getting close. Yeah. The uh, the I, I will say, since you love to spoil shit, the villain is a total letdown. The main. Are you talking about Mister Negative? Yeah. Yeah. He's, total he's, letdown. <laughs> you're like he looks. He looks cool though. Yeah, he looks pretty cool. cool. I mean, he looks like he whoop your ass, but yeah, you just you wipe the fucking floor with him. He takes you to like the negative zone. <laughs> like that matters. You're Spider Man. You rely on Spider Sense. I don't know, man. Some of these guys are tough. Some of them are tough. Yes, that's true. Well, it's just like with Batman and goddamn Clayface. Let's not forget that. Uh, all right. So I, I actually on Game Pass. You know, I'm always up to date on the Game Pass. I'm always looking for games that I can play. Yeah, and you need to try this Pokemon survival game called Power. Not interested. Um, <laughs> <laughs> 
got millions of players, dude. I mean, I don't like you. You know, this goes Brand all the way new. back to Final Fantasy. I don't dude, like you can those get Pokemon fucking Pokemon with guns. Don't care. It's not turn. I've heard about this. I've heard it's about not this. Turn based. It is turn based. They're always no, turn based. Every Pokemon game I've ever seen is turn based. This one is not a Pokemon <laughs> game. It's a knockoff. <laughs> I actually did read about this uh, and, and saw an image that looked like uh, Pikachu got blown up and replaced with a uh, bunch of guns. Well, yeah, <laughs> and you, can your, you can eat your Pokemon, and apparently you can capture other humans and ter- force them into Pokemon. What's this game into, called? I think it's called Pal World. Battle World? Pal. P-A-L. Pal World. Pal. Pam. Pan world, pan like, like Al Pal, like Pan, like Pal, like Sar- they're Sar- your pals, like Sergeant Al Pal, like Yoda is my pal. Shut up, go lay down. Oh, it's like a pal, like Allie. Allie is a pal, but she's being a pest. Oh, pest a hey, pal. Go lay down. You got the couch today. Go on. It's gonna be funny when no. when Allie when if they could, if my dogs could hear Allie barking they might start barking. Oh, we'll start a chain going, right? Yeah, for sure. She's such a good girl. She like walks over the cords and shit. I know that's a pain in the ass for her because this 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 room is very corded. Uh, once everything's said and done. All right. Anyway, where were we? Um, okay. Uh, I I have been playing the Assassin's Creed Valhalla game. I have not played. Viking. Yeah, I have not played Assassin's Creed in a long time, and it is vastly different than it used to be. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, I am not far in the game. Um, I will say the visuals are incredible. What do I mean? It's a damn video game in the 21st century. When do they not look incredible? It's um, pretty fun, though. Yeah, I like the new style of game. I never played the old Assassin's Creed The game. old Assassin's Creed relied a lot more on strategy, right? And, and you know, that's just unfortunately the generation doesn't have enough fucking attention to um, have that kind of patience to sit and wait in a haystack and uh, kill somebody for like five minutes. You know, they just can't. They, their little brains can't take it. I don't so, want to sit there and do stealth, dude. That's I don't either. Light. Yeah, it, and it was. I, I remember that was like one of the. Th- I was like, "This is a great game, except for the gameplay." <laughs> it's like Batman. I don't want to sit here and oh, wait God, on just, criminals, just, dude. Just, just Clayface just kept running over me and running over me and running over me. Anyway, um, it is very fun, though. Like I said, I'm not that far. I have gotten to the part where you start to switch between the current timeline and the ancient timeline that was like the first part you get to drive ships and shit i mean you're it's not very intricate but it's cool uh you can get in the boat and point directions and they fucking row and you know you can follow it and shit like that don't they sing songs too like viking songs sometimes? dude here's the thing about that i think they do because it gives me options on the bottom of the screen i can skip the song or i can change over to like a story and they start telling stories. Problem is, I don't play video games with the volume up oh, <laughs> because yeah? I'm doing something else usually, right? Or I'm listening to records or fucking, <laughs> I'm embarrassed. I've got a show or something or a movie playing in the back <laughs> that I'm kind of watching. That's all right. AK, the AK doesn't time. listen to video games. Same, same thing. You know, so I, I, I think that's correct, but I, I can't confirm. With certainty because I've never heard the fucking game. I don't even know what I sound like. I could sound like a 12 year old girl in the game for all I know. Your wolf kiss, dude. That wolf kiss. Yeah, I'm, I'm, I'm wolf kiss tear, wolf kiss tears or some shit like that. <laughs> um, but no, it's pretty fun, and and I'm, with, I think I'm going to stick with it for a while and just. Uh, Apparently, it's too long of a game. People play it, it dude. Like I mean, hundreds, it's like hundreds of hours of gameplay if you've wanted to, dude. It, games like that, and Red Dead's one of those games, you know, where you where the story may end, but you can keep playing forever. I mean, there, there's really no end to it. Um, it's just all in what you want to deal with because then it doesn't become as exciting because you beat the game and, you know, you've kind of made that accomplishment and what have you. So, no, but it's fun. It, it was okay. It was good. Um, and I've been playing it. I, um, what game? I'm really looking forward to that pirate game that's coming out. Have you seen that one? The one that's supposed to be... Uh, 
where you're like a pirate and you like have your own ship and shit. Have you seen this? Do you know what I'm talking about? No. No. Okay. But, I mean, it may I, be an I've Xbox few, thing. Um, there's a few pirate games out there, but I've just never. Well, uh, Sammy plays that Sea of Thieves game, and that just looks a little kitty to me. Um, I know there's the Black Sails game, right? Is that what it's called? Black Sails or some shit? <laughs> or maybe that's a show. I don't know. Uh, all right. It's anyway. the Black Pearl, dude, in Pirates of the Caribbean. Yeah, the, I know that. The Black Pearl and <laughs> Jack Sparrow. <laughs> Yeah, Jack Sparrow. The day you almost. I'm, where's that game at? The day you almost caught Jack. There's probably a shitty PS2 version of it. Um, where it's probably like fucking a screen slider like Mario. Scroll, scroll whatever. Um, okay. What, what? Running around. Running around trying to get the rum, dude. So I've noticed, you know, with our group chat and Facebook, apparently you and I had the drop on the uh, Natalia Grace show. Uh, people are just now kind of discovering it. Um, whereas you, you watched it first, total credit, like a month ago, and, uh, you told me about it and I was like, okay. And it was the craziest fucking description I can, I can imagine. You sold that show. They should hire you for their marketing. Um, Mac should. It's, it sells itself, dude. Not really. No, not really. Not if I, <laughs> if I pass that shit. And saw the images that I see on on Max and the description. I'd be like, "This sounds dumb as fuck." Oh um, man, they were like, Here, "They were like, here's this freak. Watch this show." Yeah. So you sh- well, no. You- <laughs> oh, it's like you know, it's like uh, poverty. P- watching people that are poor. It's like watching a car you can't wreck. Help it. What watching a car wreck? It's like yep, you're, you're, you, not, you're yep, not gonna they- turn away. So. They don't report on the plane land, and they report on the plane crashing <laughs> for a reason, dude. We're getting deep. Um, all right, what have you been watching? I can't remember really. I watched that other new documentary, that American Nightmare. That's about. I'd never heard anything. Morrison about Morrison talked on, about that on the chat last night. What? The, so there's a couple it's a three, and they, yeah. three episode three episode show on Netflix about this uh, Gone Girl. Hoax kidnapping. Did you say Gone? Really... Or, or yeah, you, you gone. know the Gone Girl movie with Ben Affleck. Oh, Gone Girl. Okay, see, I didn't. I thought you were saying Dawn, like the new Dawn. <laughs> Dawn Girl. Dawn Girl. Dawn Girl dawn. with the Dawn Girl. You got a strong girl. No girl of the Dawn. The Dawn of the Girl. All right. Anyway, Dawn Girl of the Dawn. <laughs> I can't make that the title. <laughs> no. Don't do that, jeez. Even we probably, it's, probably, even though it's I probably great. just got demonetized, dude. Like we're getting money from this. I was about to say, what does monetize mean? <laughs> I don't know. Uh, anyway, monetize me. <laughs> Gone Girl. Go ahead. American Nightmare. Gone Girl. Go ahead. Well, so apparently that Gone Girl movie. I've never seen that. Have you seen that? Like once, it was really good. Uh, but yeah, I haven't it's seen about anything. some girl that like finds out her husband's cheating, and so she fakes a kidnapping, and then like she she frames him for her murder, but she's still alive. So Jesus. anyway, that movie came out around this time. There was a kidnapping, and the cops were all just like, "Oh yeah, this is a hoax. They weren't kidnapped." <laughs> They're like, and then they find out that yeah, they were kidnapped. You guys, so they were ridiculous. kidnapped, or they weren't. They were kidnapped. Okay. They they caught the kidnapper later. But the cops still didn't want to be it. They were like, no, we're not going to investigate. It's case closed. Why? These people these people just make it up. I don't know. Why are they saying this? I don't know. It made the cops sure look like idiots. <laughs> that's, what, that's what I'm sitting here thinking. Um, they also were like, oh, you were sexually uh, molested when you were younger. Apparently, people that were molested... Uh, like to make up stories about being molested to relive the thrill. Like that's something the police are quoted as saying to. Where is this, and what police force? Uh, they're just like that's why I was like. Apparently, they're just like anytime somebody's like, "Yeah, I was raped." They're like, "Were you? Were yeah. you? Though? Really? Was it a dream? You think?" Jesus Christ, that's horrible. Uh, oh, no, yeah, I, 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 I want to watch it. I, like I said, we we got to a, discu- a little discussion about what we were kind of watching um, last night. I don't night. think it was as good as Natalia Grace. 
No, nothing's good as Natalia Grace. Um, that it is doesn't just, suck you in like that one. No, dude. no, absolutely not. Did you watch? Um, did we already talk about? It? Did you watch the new True Detective? Yeah. What'd you think? It's cool. Good start. Good start. I, I need, I need see, see more. Yeah, I need to see more. Um, good character I hope it's establishment. Supernatural. It's looking that way. Uh, see, because Kush asked me that. Uh, you know, because we were kind of talking, and we have since gone back and started season one. God damn! I mean, it just never gets old. Um, but well, like, she's, a, she's awake, dude. That guy had a seizure, and they're saying she's awake in that new show. Oh yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and they all just disappeared, and they kept playing the Beatles song. <laughs> yeah, and and it freaked out Jodie Foster. Um, you know, I, I, I love he's how doing good. I love how the other cops just let it. <laughs> let it play and didn't give a shit well they were like i can't uh, they said kind of tried well ferris bueller's a, a good a good movie but that scene doesn't particularly last that long so i don't know why it keeps on that scene for hours jody's doing dude. great yeah her her acting not not skipped a beat the new girl look i'm gonna i'm gonna go old man right now i'm gonna go straight old man the fucking earrings and the cheeks I'm not a fan, ladies. Sorry. I'm sorry. If I turn you off to the show, I'm sorry. Uh, you know, your choice is your choice, and that's beautiful. I just don't like it. Could be a lot worse. Could be worse. Could be a lot worse. You're right. And she's a very attractive female. What's her name? You're good with the I names. Know. I don't know. God not damn it. Attention. The other one, other than Jodie Foster, the 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 black the black lady, and um, it was just They're looking. It, they're looking for that lady with her tongue. They found her tongue. Yeah, tongue on the floor. People disappeared, and and then a ghost. Die, 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 die. Don't what? don't fucking spoil episode. it. What are you gonna it's, spoil everything? It's the first episode. But people may be waiting, like you do, for the whole show to come out. Well, they still know what's going to happen in the first episode. It's going to show the big, massive bodies. You're right. It's just like with season one and the girl with the antlers. That was a big shocker on the first episode, and that was like their marketing campaign. Um, so, yeah, again, good start, good solid. But anyway, going back to my point, Kush was asking me, is this like a fucking ghost story? What is this? And I was like, well, it's not made by Nick. Paluzzo is that Pizzuto or whatever whatever his name is the guy that made the first see the the series True Detective as we know it season one two and three this is actually based off that series I had to read about this because I like I was like does this connect because a couple of any of them do yes 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 at one point in season two they do mention the investigation that Woody Harrelson and Matthew McConaughey were on in the prior season. Now, it is not a big moment, a big fucking conversation. It is mentioned as part of a long explanation of um, that that season's plot. But that's the only time I've seen it connected. And then also, I, I forgot about this. Season three, same thing. They reference season one because, if you recall, season three involves the kidnapping of children. And, um, you know, that's, that was heavily influenced on season one, but season one had some of the most complex and amazing character development that I've seen in, in anything. And, and I just love going back and watching that first season, but night country, a good start. I would recommend you watch it. It is now available on max. I think new episodes drop what Sundays at nine. Is that right? Uh, nine o'clock. Nine o'clock Eastern, I believe, is the time, and uh, you can check that out. So uh, I've got. I went back and um, what what sparked this? Oh, Born Identity was was on sale for five dollars. Oddly enough, I had the other two, but did not have the first. So um, I think I, it was just always available on something, if I remember right. And so I bought it, watched the first one. That immediately sent me down the road. Now I'm on the third one, watching the end of it. Um, you're watching the action movie. I'm, I'm into the born so that you, it, Christian's right. That will inevitably lead me down the road to more action films. Me and Kush watched. She, she did big trouble in little China for the first time. What a delight it is watching that movie for the first time with someone. 
That was just a great, great experience. I, w- I should have recorded it. Um, I was nervous because Kush is, Kush is not big on, I mean, she likes comic book stuff and sci-fi and creepy shit and all that stuff. But, you know, if it gets too, too much of those genres, it starts to kind of get lost on her. And I told, what I, what I told her, the way I sold her on it was, I said, if you're not absolutely fucking in love with Kurt Russell's character in the first 10 minutes of this movie, you're not going to like it. If you can love him in the first ten minutes, the rest of the movie is is fucking great. Um, because I think I strongly think he's the reason that movie is great. Uh, yeah, of course, the, you know James Hong and 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 you know uh, Hong. Uh, uh, you know Kim Cattrall and all the other great performances in that film, of course. But I mean, you know Kurt Russell. The really monster put that on yeah, his back. The rain guy she laughed at monsters, that. right? She laughed at the practical effects, the thing coming out of the fucking wall in the underground when they're walking. She laughed at that shit. And she loved Kurt Russell's freak outs, you know, when he would freak out from being scared or whatever. Was she impressed at his knife throwing skills? Dude, when he threw that knife out of his boot, I she fell on the ground laughing. Like, like there's a scene, and for those that may have not seen this movie, there's a scene where he bends down to get a knife out of his boot, and he's so fucking pumped with adrenaline because they're fighting, it. he throws, accidentally throws the knife across the room as he's trying to get it out of his boot, and she loved that, that stuff, like, like where he, he pushed, then he, then later on in the film, he pushes the knife in his boot, and he kills somebody that's fallen on him, and gets mm. stuck like he can't get him. He can't get the fucking guy off of him. She loved that slapstick shit, and, and so I and I kind of figured she would. So that was an amazing experience. Is, is again, once again, watching a movie as iconic for guys like us with someone for the first time is just a really fun experience. Has Sam seen it? Big trouble. Yeah, I don't know. He's there yet. He's close. I mean, he. What, what was he watching with me the other day? Where I was like, oh, Sam's watching this. Um, That's can't. probably always fun watching movies with him too. Yeah, it's fun. It is fun. But but see, a lot he 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 wants to watch a lot of the newer shit too. Deservedly so. Get, I I didn't. You I wasn't get really to show him the classics. Well, I mean, the classics were forced on me, you know. So I don't know why I can't force them on him. <laughs> yeah, what's up with that? <laughs> but we all know that um, things change through time, so. Um, He's got his own screen, dude. He doesn't need your screen. He doesn't need it. Yeah, his and his technology has vastly surpassed whatever I had to work with. Um, all right. Uh, you got anything else that you've been doing? You want to discuss or talk about? No, not really. All right, let's get into the show. Um, you brought this up last week, but I definitely wanted to spend more time on it because it was such an iconic role. Peter Crombie. The actor who played Crazy Joe Davola on the series Seinfeld passed away at age 71. Now, this actually happened on January 13th, which was, um, I think, the day or maybe the day before we recorded last week. So I wasn't able to put it in the show, but Christian caught it. Um, This guy's been in a couple movies that I've seen. I know he was in seven. He was the fucking, um, um, what what do you call it, Uh, forensics guy uh Ooh. that would that would come to the crime scene after the murders uh very very bit very minor bit parts um he's also uh starred in the doors i know he was in that he was like one of the club owners i believe um i want to say he he was he in one of the x-men movies as the fucking guy he looks just like him I, f- I feel like he played that guy in, in one of the other Marvel movies, but I could be completely wrong. Um, so anyway, all our, all our, all our warmest wishes to his family and friends. Um, he acted for a long time and, um, you know, he, uh, he had a brief illness and, uh, tragically passed away. It wasn't a mental illness either. No, 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 crazy no, 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 no. It was, a, it was a medical illness. I, I, for for a second, I read it as mental illness after reading the word crazy. Yeah, I crazy. You. Speaking of crazy, um, so this <laughs> this was crazy, <laughs> fucking nuts. Apparently, um, Hulk Hogan is now a bona fide superhero. Uh, uh, last week, 
There was a serious car accident that Hulk Hogan witnessed that resulted in a woman being flipped upside down in her car. And he actually jumped in, I guess, to help the driver get out or check on her at least. He yeah. pulled over. He had a friend, unnamed friend. This happened in Clearwater, Florida. And, uh, you know, uh, look, <laughs> I understand why this made headlines, but I would hope that anyone would do that. Um, if you see a car flip over in front of you, you know, obviously the first thing you do is verify your safety and the safety of any loved ones or people that may be with you. But yeah, then you go check on the other fucking person. I mean, that's, is that not how it's done anymore? I'm asking. Uh, sometimes I don't have a chance to stop if you don't, but I mean, a car flips over in front of you. I think that would like Trump anything you may be going to do or have to do. I don't know. Well, uh, maybe, I mean, if we're on the highway, I don't know, dude, I just speed right by it. <laughs> if it happened right in front of you, you wouldn't stop at all. It'd be dangerous to stop. <laughs> no, what did I say the first time I said, if you're on the highway or something, you would pull over. They have what's called a shoulder, Christian. It's not meant to just drive off like you do. Uh, I don't know. That's you pull off to the shoulder. The shoulder. I'm what? not getting on the shoulder. <laughs> okay. That's fine. That's what I'm asking. I would do that. If I saw a car flip over in front of me, um, I, would try, I think I would try to help. If we were on a city street, yeah. If there's a place to park <laughs> where there's not cars going 80 miles per hour around me. Right. Right. Maybe that's why Hulk is, is being crowned a hero because you are, you share the popular opinion. Uh, I don't know if it's a popular opinion. Well, I mean, you know, I, I think that's why this, this story was so gripping because, you know, Hulk's seen worse too, dude, than 80 mile per hour cars flying at him. He's used to 80 mile per hour car crashes, just not literally. <laughs> he's at their leg dropping them, dude. And oh, getting, I thought, I thought dude, don't think I didn't think all this shit in my head when I was picturing the scene of him like ripping his shirt before he goes down in there to save the woman. Oh, God. Mm. Uh, anyway, good job, Hulk. You demand, buddy. He's like, are you okay, brother? Yeah, yeah. Well, then th that was the joke, you know, that went across the internet was everything, brother. Um, so, yeah, that's the story. That was a that. bad crash, brother. <laughs> Dogs quit. <laughs> oh, shit. Did you see uh, Grayson Waller fucking go insane? I um, heard about it, and then I watched it because you have it on our list. Oh, God. Dude, what? <laughs> it wasn't that bad. It wasn't, it that, wasn't bad. that bad, but I mean, it wasn't that bad, but he was just being stupid. You know <laughs> You know what I mean? I don't know. I think he was in the right, dude. That stupid camera guy came up shadow well, boxing like he was going to do something. That's insulting. Dude. But I mean, we've seen a lot of worse reactions from wrestlers. Oh, no, no. I'm not saying what he did is like earth shattering or will end his career or any shit like that. I'm not saying that. I'm just saying... You know, um, LA Knight looked upset too, dude. Well, he was just annoyed probably because they were only there to promote elimination chamber. And now it's going to be this big fucking thing. You, you know, the, I think the trick to surviving when you're a star, like athletic or movie or what is just fucking do it and leave. Don't, don't cause any, don't point any attention in your direction that you're not asking for. So they um, should have done the finisher on him, the guy like the host wanted. No, but I mean, you know, I I definitely think like L.A. Knight did that Waller could have could have you know done it in a more professional manner. These guys are professional wrestlers. Well, I don't know. I wasn't I think, there. I think L.A. Knight was proud of him for standing up for him. Well, you know, I mean, that's fine. And again, from the wrestlers. Those, those hosts were being ridiculous. You're talking dude. about. Yeah, they were. And I don't deny that at all. I do not deny that they were being ridiculous and, and, and being stupid. And they were totally in the wrong for what they did. But I'm saying. You're to, trying to say that they should have acted like. They no, I'm not saying that they shouldn't have said anything and stopped uh -huh, it and whatever, put an dude, end to you're it. Saying they should not do anything. 
Oh my God. Whatever. Never mind. Jesus Christ. Can't even get. I'm going to have to mute your ass to fucking get a word. You should have punched that guy in the mouth, dude, like that kangaroo. That's what I'm saying. Professionals don't square up on motherfucking camera operators and goddamn TV studios when they're professional fucking wrestlers that are wrestling in front of hundreds of thousands of people for hundreds of thousands of dollars. Okay? That's what I was trying to say. God damn. Yeah, dude, like Grayson Waller should not let down professional wrestling with money on the line like that. Right. I don't know who he is, dude. What's it about, it's Christian? Not, it's about it's the not money. Like he's Roman Reigns or anything. No, it isn't. <laughs> and and that that's another point. Why would you fucking do this when you're on your way up and coming? To get up and coming, Poor dude. Shit. This is gonna bring good attention to him. You just got another weird wrestling take. Whatever. Zip's insane take of the week. Uh, nobody can hear my fucking take because I can't get a fucking word in. They all heard it. Yeah, I, after I made it. Anyway, we got the clip online. You can uh, make your decision there. Why is this thing fucking... Keep sliding. Um, again, I you know, wh- whatever, whatever, whatever. Your opinion is your opinion. I just think, you know, if you're a professional anything, you have to be professional. Just, just my, just my opinion. I don't think he was unprofessional. Standing up and squaring off with some fucking jerk off in a fucking TV studio and fucking wherever the fuck they were is professional. I didn't see him squaring off. He didn't stand up and square off with the dude. He stood up. He didn't square off with him. Dave Meltzer of the Wrestling Observer Newsletter is reporting that the plan now for WrestleMania 40. Is going to be Rollins versus Punk. Now, I don't know if this is before he got hurt or after he got hurt because we are getting reports that Seth Rollins did have a pretty bad injury. <clears throat> uh, I think the MCL is what I heard, maybe. And a torn meniscus. Okay. So, yeah, he's he's not in very good health right now. So, I think they're keeping it kind of open-ended, so to speak, but... Uh, you know, it's all in what you believe with Uncle Dave. Um, and, and you know, but he's usually has pretty good ears on the ground and, and all the companies. So there's that as well. So we'll see what happens at the Royal Rumble and we'll see what happens at WrestleMania. I totally think Punk will win the Rumble or he'll feud with whoever does win. We have a report here that, um, much like he did last year, Roman Reigns, the current undisputed WWE champion, after WrestleMania 40, whoever he may face, he may face an extended absence from WWE television. This has kind of um, brought up the conversation again about old versus new and how much time people should have, especially if they're champion. Um, you know, because there was a time when the champion was on television every week, uh, and every, every show, um, maybe not house shows, but you saw definitely a lot of them and, you know, I totally understand it's a different world and, and these guys have different things that they, you know, are getting into acting or whatever, you know, business ownership. I don't know. Fuck whatever. So, you know, you need a lot more time and, you know, there's only so much time you know, obviously. So, you know, I mean, I get it. It sucks, but I get it. Um, but he's the tribal chief. He's the fucking tribal chief. So he can do whatever the fuck he wants. Yeah. Hell to the week. Until somebody else takes the place at the head of the table. He can, well, you see that, you see that gif down there of, uh, he runs the table, dude. Yeah. I don't know. You think the rock's going to come take him I mean, out? when you, it, here's, here's the thing. When you're talking about Roman and the rock, I just don't see how anybody would be able to beat the rock unless he puts them over, which I think would be the, be the idea is that the rock would put Roman over. But then, I mean, what does that, what does that do for Roman? I mean, he's already making headlines with the length of it was four fucking years. Now he's been champion straight. Um, yeah. So, yeah, and, uh, you know, when we're celebrating his first pin, uh, like Jay did back uh, a few months ago, you know, it's like, 
I don't know, man. And then, and then of course and then there's, there's all the shenanigans and everything. Right. That's what was, and, then, and then there's all the bullshit and, and all the fucking new additions coming over from AEW. Yes. I'm talking about Cody and I'm talking about fucking, uh, 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 punk and, uh, all those people coming over. So, you know, it's the good thing is they got a lot to work with. <laughs> <laughs> in terms of matches. I mean, I do not think WrestleMania will suck this year either night. I think it's going to be incredible, whatever they come up with, just from the roster. So, um, you know, I, 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 I hope some of the younger guys, I don't know, and, and the Waller thing, I apologize if I freaked out a little bit, because I like the guy, and I think he's a solid wrestler, and I don't want him to get fucking canceled, because these people are fucking PC, and they're fucking... You know, I'll sue your ass and this and that shit. So that's where I was coming from. The whole I'm thing's sorry. a work. I'm the sorry. Whole thing's a I work. hope it is. You, if it is, I will gladly eat shit. Because <laughs> I, I, if it was a work, it was a great one. And you got me. So, I, you know, again, all, all the best. to. I, I like Grayson Waller. And I want him to keep going. He's good. You know, we, we need that talent. What's his finisher? The Waller effect? Is that? I don't know. I don't know. Him and Austin Theory and that. Uh, I thought it had something to do with walls or something. Big like Donut. They all seem like the same person to me. <laughs> I can totally see that. I can totally see that. They do. They do. They do kind of blend almost. Um, like you split them in two. I was so happy to see Nick Namath, formerly WWE's Dolph Ziggler, make his amazing debut in TNA wrestling. Um, of course, many of you know, we've reported on this show, Dolph Ziggler was released by the WWE last year. Um, and again, I think it was the best thing that could happen to him. Um, because obviously he's gone and, and TNA's numbers are now the best they've ever been. Their buy rates are incredible and yada, 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 on and on and on. Um, never watched much TNA. I, I don't watch much TNA. I mean, I know the main players a little bit. Um, that was Moose, right? That he yeah, was he's talking to Moose. Him. Right, right. Um, who's, I guess, he's the big dog. Uh, big dog. Big, big Moose. Dog. Big Moose dog. Um, big Moose dog. Big Moose dog. It's like, it's like Sammy. You're Sammy, not my Sammy. Um I, uh, I wish, I wish Nick all the best. Um, I think he'll do great wherever he is. I've said that since the start. Um, I thought, I think WWE totally misused him. Um, his hair's never looked better, dude. Dude, his hair is wavy as fuck. I mean, you could put that guy in a Pantene Pro V commercial. Yeah. That's, that's, that's one of the things that I, I noticed as well, Christian. So good eye. Looks silky smooth. Like Hulk it does. Hogan. Yeah. It looks like Hogan's. Well, I figured since we discussed it last week, we should probably talk about it this week. <laughs> we had, it, Yeah. <laughs> I mean, it sounds like it might be okay. We have gameplay here that we... Uh, I fucked it up again. Wow. The same what story kind of, headline. The new Indiana Jones game was revealed in a Xbox Direct. Yes. A it developer is, Direct. Yes. Like a Nintendo Direct from Xbox. Correct. I don't think it's called Xbox Direct, but it should be. <laughs> it should be. Yeah, it sounds right. Lucasfilm and Bethesda Games uh, revealed the first ever gameplay for the new Indiana Jones game at, and they had it down here, Christian. You're right. Xbox Developer Direct 2024. Um, this was announced. And one of the, the, the big news, I think, was that it's like mostly first person. It is mostly first person, which I'm not sure I'm down with. I'm really like third person. Really, uh, it, really. It's, it gets. I think it's a more immersive sometimes. <laughs> Maybe. And uh, let me ask you something. Do you think that is that Harrison Ford voicing Indy? Do you think? No, they've said no. Okay, it's, Troy, it's Troy Baker. Sure. He's another voice actor guy from okay. games. Well, he sounds like fucking Indiana Jones the way he should sound. That's why I say it was very pleasant to hear Indiana Jones sound like Indiana Jones and not old Harrison Ford. Um, some, some people are saying it looks like the Riddick games that were on Xbox, I think, back in the day that were really good. A little bit, yeah. They were first person, yeah. Um, and, yeah. and yeah, they were fucking nuts, uh, some of the missions for those that I recall. But anyway, uh, you can check out the trailer. It's on our Facebook page. Um, 
I'm excited because it's Indiana Jones, and I always support Indy, so I'll probably get it. And, and it, uh, it's going to be on Game Pass. I don't know if it'll sell oh. Xboxes, but it'll definitely sell Game Pass. Well, I've already got that, so I win. Uh, all right. <laughs> Fuck me. Um, Halo Season 2. Uh, we kind of discussed it last week in a joking manner. And then <laughs> all these headlines started coming out about people being pissed off that he continues to remove his fucking helmet. I like the quote he had, dude, about like how it's impossible to do long-term storytelling with the helmet. Well, tough shit. I mean, they, 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 you're not, dude, again, you're not looking to win the Oscar here, bro. Okay, you're playing. It's just like Pedro with Mando. You know what I mean? It's like we know Pedro's great, yeah, and we know good. Pedro can fucking do anything and anything. I mean, let's I face forget it. about Mando. I was thinking about Dread, but Mando, yeah, that proves that it's a series. Dread too. Carbon, he can fucking do anything except Johnny Cage, and uh, so you know. Um, <laughs> We'll get into that. Well, I was just saying that one's a movie. So with Mandalorian, that's even a better comparison. Yeah. Yeah. So, you know, I mean, for, for, I wouldn't hire a guy who has to act with his face for a role. <laughs> yeah. Apparently, that's what he's saying, right? Apparently, he's, he can't do long term acting without his face. So, I gotta have the face. I gotta have my face to act. I can't act without I, my face, dude. How does Nicolas Cage do it? <laughs> face is the main you focus on the face when you act the face is oh. like trying to act without a voice dude it's so ridiculous it's so ridiculous um you know and and it and it just the problem is it fucks up everything right because that just like myself it turns me off on the show because you're not keeping up with the continuity of what it's based off of Maybe yeah, I'm being. Yeah, he doesn't take it off in the game that much, does he? I don't think I ever saw him take it off in any of the games. Yeah, why does he need to take it off? Can't he just go on missions? What is this TV show about? <laughs> Again, I, I don't care about his fucking personal life or his sex life. It's, Apparently, he's having sex on the show too now. He's, yeah, he's making love. Dude. Jesus like Christ! I mean, love. Halo love. Why do I? Why do I feel like people think I'm the crazy one? <laughs> <laughs> like what is this show anyway have they even played yeah, the game no they haven't and that's why they, they're probably watching it's because they haven't played the game and don't know anything about it mm -hmm. again you know this is a personal private preference with me you know you got to get the basics right first before i'll even humor it with my time um I'll be honest, when I heard about Mando and I heard about that fucker getting cast as him, I was nervous. I was. I was like, man, he's going to have his fucking helmet off a lot, and that is not how Mandalorians live. You know, they that's the helmet's the deal. And they respected that. Now, I think that's more Favreau than Pedro, but still. If you don't no get, the, if you don't get uh -oh. the basics right, I'm not interested. Anyway, um... Halo Season 2, Paramount Plus, I believe it's coming out, or it's already out. Uh, I think it's already out, uh, streaming on uh, Paramount Plus. Don't have it at the moment. I think I'm in a, lot, a lull with it, too. Sitting so on the to, throne in that picture, dude. With his helmet off. With his helmet off, yeah, of yeah, course. With I his mean. helmet off. Uh, you know, I mean, again, what, what the fuck, do you know how much more badass that image would have looked with his fucking helmet on? But no, you got to show the fucking face. Got to have the face time. Like it's fucking 1983. Yeah, dude. You and see that Sylvester expression making, making fucking dude, dread. I don't give a shit about his expression. It just makes and he me doesn't even do anything with his face, dude. He's just sitting there with his face. He doesn't even act with it. That's what I'm saying. It's stupid. And worthless, and you're just hurting this franchise is all you're doing at this point. Daisy Ridley is about to have a considerably better life than she ever knew could exist. <laughs> That's the only well, we way we talked I can about it last story. week, dude. Getting those Star Wars paychecks, we didn't not realize how big it was. Though. Twelve point five million dollars. 
for New Jedi Order. Now, that's let me crazy. ask you. They say that's what Roby made for Barbie. Right, right. And nobody this else is, could, well, they had a list of other people getting paid close to that. But close nothing, to it, but nothing and that, like. And there's like. Yeah, right. Let me ask you something. Especially when, like, she first started making, like, with a few hundred thousand. Right, exactly. I mean, and that's the what I put in the, in the, in the, in the, uh, in the rundown sheet was her fucking salary almost <laughs> like five or six times, I think. Um, ten times. Yeah, ten times. Yeah, almost ten times. Probably. You're probably not far ten off. Times. Probably about right. So let me ask you, I want to, I want to ask you a question. Do you think that amount, is because they had to they had to show her that to even get her back. Like after the last three and the kind of sour taste that it put in people's mouths, you know, do you think that that is how that number got? Because I mean, come on, they couldn't have started off there, right? I mean, give me a break. I mean, that that had to be. I would think, and I don't know what the fuck do I know? But, I don't know, man, because I think she'd be desperate too. So I don't know. <laughs> But at the same time, she's the kind of actress that I can see being like, no, I don't want to go back to that and blah, 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 blah. Yeah, but remember I was saying I haven't seen her in anything else. True. But again, because... I checked her IMDb, dude. There wasn't much there. Did you double check it? Weird shorts and stuff. <laughs> well, again, you know... Uh, I don't think she gets as much work as you, you presume. I don't know. I don't think she gets at work. No, I'm not saying that. I'm saying like... Because they they structured those last films around her so much, they and they want to continue that storyline. You almost well, have I think to have still her. Still has right? a lot of appeal, and they they're banking yeah. on her. Okay, yeah. Time will tell. But uh, we just wanted to cover her insane payday, and good 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 for Daisy. You know, good for Daisy. We've learned that Jason Reitman, the director of the Ghostbusters Afterlife and upcoming Frozen Empire film, his next project will be a film based on the early days of Saturday Night Live. Um, this would have been around 1975. As a matter of fact, uh, the running title or working title of this concept is SNL 1975, and it would basically follow... The cast of uh, creator Lorne Michaels' hit sketch comedy. Um, and, uh, their background people, like the network mm-hmm. executives. Dick and Ebersol, writers. right, who people know, I'm sure, from he was a longtime NBC uh, network exec. So this this looks interesting um, and, and something I would not mind learning about, you know, Um Especially something so iconic and the people that were involved at first. And I'm not just talking about the actors. You know, I mean there were there were there was groundbreaking all over the show. It wasn't just with the actors. Yeah. So, and they said it was funny back then, yeah. so maybe this would be funny too. Right. Exactly. So I'm all for it. Jason Reitman, he hasn't let me down yet. Um, of course the son of the late Ivan Reitman. Another Nepo baby. <laughs> That's all they are. Hollywood full of them. That's all they are. Christian, you know I was excited. Tron 3 has began filming production. Um, Tron 3 again. Tron 3 again. Um, Sorry, screen crashed. Jared Leto. It didn't crash for you, but it crashed, it crashed for me. Jared uh, Leto is going to be there. Yes. He's filming this movie for yes. Tron 3. Yes, Jared Leto will be there. Can you see the screen, Christian? No, he's actually changing his name to Jared Letron. You can't see my screen? No, I just see a black screen. All right. Stop sharing and then share a new one. I'm working on it. Well, you're still sharing. There, something's changing. Now it's like a blue screen. Oh, there it is. All there right, he is. Good. All right. Anyway, uh, Walk, Tron 3. I'm running. Running? Huh? Huh? It says week one on the grid, baby. Back on the grid. In the I gotta line, quit moving man. closer to the mic. I'm gonna get too loud. I keep I keep going down. Like I gotta I gotta get a new chair. Um, yeah, yeah. Support Geek Zip. New support chair. Geek Zip. We need new furniture, chairs, and such. Um, 
because new we, subscribers too. We want to get yeah, that subscription nice count have, up, baby. It'd be nice to have some of those. I'm not gonna lie. So we were talking about it, and uh, Godzilla minus one is now a global phenomenon. It has reached a milestone as having a hundred million dollars worldwide. It's the Ooh. highest grossing Japanese language movie released in North America and the fifth highest grossing foreign language film in North America. So we know that it is in foreign language now, right? Yes. <laughs> that <laughs> confirms that. Um, I'm, I'm, again, I've seen what little I've seen. It looks incredible. You are awfully vocal today, girl. Uh, shut up. I heard so, that one a little bit. Anyway, um, check out Godzilla Minus One. It looks incredible. I really hope I get a chance to see it. Um, I'm waiting on it for digital, but they just never release it. Why don't you go to the theater for that one? I don't want Isn't to. that one you'd want to see in the theater because it's big Godzilla on big screen? I don't care. Um, <laughs> I'm like you, man. It takes a lot to get me to the theater. A lot. I know, but I figure that would be a good one. That that That's close. I mean, but I'm not, not going to lie. Maybe it's the language. Of just, you don't want the language either? No, I don't mind that. I really don't. I don't, you know, because I, I, you know, one of my favorite movies of all time is Crouching Tiger, Hidden Dragon. And when that came out, it was, it was, uh, subtitled. Yeah. And, uh, so I'm kind of, I'm kind of used to it, honestly. Okay. All right. Yeah. But it's, it's the idea of going out. Honestly, people are assholes. You know, everybody hates each other. Too expensive. Too, Thanks. yeah. Money. Uh, you know. <laughs> Now this story, I did watch this when we got well, caught up on the Well, you shared this. Uh, I did not see the clip, but I've always thought that it was bullshit. Um, well, they the, talk about like the... Uh, well, let's, the let's tell them what we're cast. talking about. The Always Sunny cast, Always Sunny in Philadelphia, were presenters at the Emmys this year, and they came out and made a speech. Go ahead, Christian. Now, no, go ahead. They, they talked about like they were joking about like, oh, you guys do this every year? And then the, they're talking to Danny DeVito, and they're like, "You won awards." He's like, "Yeah, I got one for Taxi." Yeah. And they're like, "And they're like, how many years was Taxi on?" And he's like, "You know, four or five. And then he's like, "Yeah, I got like thirty nominations and eighteen awards or something." And they start talking about like, "It's ridiculous." Our, show, our show's been on sixteen years and has got zero nominations. <laughs> they're it's like the math. The math is wrong. There are so many shows out there. And, and that's why, I mean, honestly, that's why a lot of people don't fucking watch these award shows, right? And, I, and you know, I can't blame the award because there's so much, right? And, and it's like you forget other things, you know, people get so caught up binging that, you know, shows come and go while they're binging what they're watching, you know? And it's just really, it, it's a crazy time in television and, and film. You know, I mean, it's, it's a crazy time. So, uh, anyway, I have not watched the clip. I'm sure it's hilarious. And they fucking have an absolute 100% right point it is a show that's been on for 16 years and as popular as they are. And some of the writing on some of those shows are fucking some of the best comedy I've ever seen in my life. And I know Christian would back me up on that. So yeah, some of the cinematography and everything. Uh, that's like what I'm saying. It's ridiculous. Episodes. It's ridiculous. It, that that Charlie they were been nominated. Yeah. Yeah. Or, or, uh, you know, Rob's writing, you know, I mean, it, like I said, it's just, I saw this and I rolled my eyes. I, I thought it was funny. They were poking fun at it because that's who they are. But again, it just kind of made me go fucking bastards, you know, because it's like, yeah, these guys work their ass. Came from nothing. Got hardly any support. Uh, was told to shut it down on multiple occasions early on. Made it better. Brought Danny DeVito out of retirement to act permanently on this series. Never got a fucking nod. I don't blame him. I would have fucking. I would have been like violent with it. I would have been like, "You fucking bastard." No, like I'm gonna steal something from the back. Yeah, good. They should. They should steal one of the fucking Emmys and put it in the bar in one of the episodes that'd be hilarious i think they were making references to the martin lawrence show did martin ever get emmy nominations either? i don't know 
My God. I mean, same thing. If he didn't get any, that's crazy because that show was fucking hilarious. Um, speaking of hilarious, Seth McFar- McFarlane's, not Seth McFarlane, not Spawn. Oh, you know, I had to look up how to spell. Todd. I had to look up how to spell McCready from uh, the thing. <laughs> It's, it's like it's Mac, Mac Ready. Ready. Yeah, it's yeah, Mac Ready. Yeah, Mac Ready. You got to have the A in there, though. That's the trick. M M and little A. And the R E A D, dude. R E A D, too. I was putting the McCready, like Creed and stuff. Yeah, like yeah. It's, it's, it's an and anomaly. And then I, I, thought the, I thought the other guy's name was Childs. It's Childs. Yeah. It's Childs with a D? Yeah, with a D. Yeah, I thought it was Childs, but it's a D. Childs. Huh. I guess it does have his name on the tape when they're doing the blood test, doesn't it? Probably in the credits, too. Probably, yeah. The new Ted prequel on Peacock, which I have not watched. Did you say you watched some of it? I've watched the first episode. Okay. Is it is it an episode-to-episode show, or is the whole thing on there? It's out already. Okay. It's all out. Um, this I, is a prequel show it. based on the films with Mark Wahlberg that, sh- that you know portray this animatronic teddy bear but is it animatronic or is it just a, to life? I mean, I don't, it's come I, to life, dude. It was his teddy bear. Yeah, I don't think you're ever really life. given an explanation, but who cares? Um, it doesn't matter. Uh, anyway, the film like were, a robot, like Megan. Yeah, no, it's not like it's not like Mithrigan. Um, So again, it broke the records for streaming on Peacock. The new series did, which I mean, it's, it's been a while since the Ted movies, and. Um, you know, there's no Wahlberg this time. It's just the bear, right? There's, there's no. It's, it, is is Seth still voicing? Yeah. The bear. Okay. Okay. I, I don't know. Like I said, I haven't seen it. I haven't even seen. I think he did motion for capture for it too. Holy shit! Really? That's crazy. Um. Maybe facial expressions. I don't know. Maybe. Um. They say that the success is unlikely to lead to a third film, but it does look good for a potential continuation of the series uh, beyond what they're doing currently, which I think was just kind of a one-off prequel idea from what they say here. Um, so it's, we'll see. It's a funny enough show. I watched it twice. Yeah? I showed it to somebody else. What'd they think? They thought it was okay. <laughs> they, they were like, take it or leave it. I mean, you know, we, I I love anything that's original and, you know, prequel stuff is usually pretty original. Christian, do you know this guy, Billy Mitchell? Have you heard him before, before I I shared our prep with you? Yeah. Okay. I, 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 he's a a liar and a cheater. Yeah. That's, that's kind of how I remember it. Uh, (laughs) well, apparently they just settled and he got his Donkey Kong scores reinstated on this website but not like on their current records right on their like historical records so right. they kind of still are just like yeah it doesn't matter you're on our page yeah kind of kind of sh- to shut him up yeah <laughs> you're not put back into like first place on the leaderboard right right um there was a documentary some years ago called king of kong and it basically was uh, this documentary about the man who held the highest score, never been surpassed, in the video game Donkey Kong. Well, I was watching a video by somebody yeah. that's talking about how he's using this, and like this article is doing him a favor by making it sound like he's been proven to not be a liar and a right, cheater, and right, he's right. been reinstated. Well, and so that's he, that's he one just, of the reasons I wanted to talk about He's lying again and getting people to believe it. <laughs> that's one of the reasons I wanted to talk about it, because the title of the story makes him look like the some big fucking hero, uh, you know, that he was denied something that was his. Well, not really. Um, yeah. <clears throat> they basically placated a liar, is what they did here. Um. I can't think of a better way to say it than that. So, F you, Billy Don't Mitchell. believe the hype. Don't believe the hype. <laughs> well, we were kind of talking about it, Christian, about what Christopher Landon, the director for Scream number seven, who we know left. Yeah, uh, I, was, I read stuff about that girl the other day, too, Melissa Barada or whatever. What did you read? She was meeting up with all the people and they were, she was just talking about how she's got to, you know, stand up for what she believes in and stuff. Right. Okay. 
Oh, Barbara Eden's going to be at the Comic Con? Yeah, we'll talk about it. We're going to talk about it. <laughs> do, 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 do. So um, this guy, Christopher Landon, he's got a new project. That's right. Freaky and Happy Death Day director Christopher Landon is working on a new werewolf film. Um, after his called departure from little, Scream little 7. Little Baby Wolf. No. A still, Little Baby Wolf. A Little that. Good Wolf. That's what it is. No, it's Big Bad. Big Not Bad. Even wolf, it's just called Big Bad. Just Big Bad. Big Bad. Big Bad. Chase me. Big Bad. Chase me. Big Bad. Chase me. Oh, Lord. Big Bear. Big Bear. Chase me, dude. That's the big what I'm old bear. About. Not Gold Bear. <laughs> Goldberg? <laughs> Goldberg. 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 Um, fans what? of the show She Hawk were disappointed last week to discover that there unfortunately will not be a second season of the Disney Plus streaming show. I don't know if that's actually been announced so much as the actress saying, I don't think it's going to happen. Well, here's something I did not know. The visual effects, and and I mean, I knew I knew it, it it had skyrocketed, but I had no idea how much. That show, one season of it, cost them two hundred and twenty five million dollars. That's a fucking box office opening. <laughs> yeah. So, um, and it's funny how bad it was. They make fun of MCU for paying so much for yeah, right visual visual arts that right. <laughs> When, when other people seem to get it done a lot better and cheaper. Exactly right. And, and and this goes back to, I think, what me and you talk about all the time, that it's not always about what it looks like. The content has to matter. And, you know, if you don't have a solid story or if you're adapting something and you're not adapting it in the way that the fans will appreciate, it's going to fall on its fucking ass every time. Every time. You could give someone a billion dollars to go make a show, and if it's not a good story, they don't invest in the characters, and they don't, you don't capture their passion, it's going to fail every time. I like She-Hulk. I'd watch She-Hulk. I do too. too. No, I'm <laughs> saying that, you know, like you said, do you, do you think that it had to necessarily be that expensive? I mean, it wasn't really, like, I think it was expensive because they had to go in and re-fucking do her from when they first came out. If you recall, nobody liked the way she looked. So they had to go back in and do it again, right? Yeah. And I don't know how much much, of that is part of that. How much did Sonic cost? Yeah. Oh, God damn. I don't even want to look at that shit. Well, I mean, it'd be interesting to compare it (laughs) because it's probably less than this. It's like, why is the MCU paying so much for for, for VFX? I don't know. I do not know. It sounds like a scam, dude. Could be. All right. We're uh, we're just about at time, so we'll go ahead and mention a couple more things here, and then we will uh, wrap her on up. Uh, I'm opening the links right now. I'm trying. hungry. Anyway, trying to anyway. Um, the last thing we'll talk about is David Ayer, who recently came out and said that he is done with superhero films. Um, has I thought ex- he was just done with DC. He's done with superhero films entirely. That's how I read it. I didn't, didn't read it. You DC. said it. Oh, okay. Oh, no, you're right. Done with DC. <laughs> Sorry. And this refers to the idea that there's an A-year cut of the Suicide Squad, um, yeah. the movie that he made when he was a part of the MC, uh, MCU, the DCEU. So... Screen Rant caught up with David and had a discussion on the issue of superhero fatigue. Now, we've talked about this a couple times on this show. I definitely feel like that's happening. Um, I feel like it it has been happening for the last year at least, maybe even before that. Yeah, I disagree with it, but it's happening. (laughs) Explain. What do you mean you disagree with it, but it's happening? What do you mean? I wish it wasn't. Oh, well, yeah, no. But why is it happening is is more of the question I want to have answered. Is it happening because there's so much or is it because there's so much and it's so much shit? Both. 
easy. It's answer. hard. It's you can't. I mean, even if there, there's hard to find the good ones in so much crap. Well, you know, in this article in particular, um, you know, a and then there's a, just so much crap. You just assume that the rest of them are crap. Right. Right. That's true. I mean, guilt by association definitely comes into play. Um, I mean, have you, what about that Aquaman movie? Is that one? Would you like that one or probably you don't think, it's, I think I would. I just haven't seen you, it. I think, I think you would too. But again, people are just, you know, I don't but know Aquaman is it, Aquaman is a lot different than um, a Spider-Man or a Superman or a Batman. Um, it's a lot harder. And I mean, you're talking about, and DC has even fucking said this, probably the hardest character to adapt to feature length film that they have in Aquaman. Um, because he's been interpreted so many ways over the years. He's been like the fucking cruel king, the goofy adventurer, the fucking, uh, you know, justice warrior for the ocean. I mean, there's just, there's a lot of iterations of Aquaman. Yeah, but he's still a superhero, so he gets yeah. hit by the superhero fatigue. No, I'm, no, no, no. I'm, I'm sorry. I got off on a soapbox about Aquaman. Yeah, no, 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 no. I'm not saying that's, that's, that's the reason I'm saying that, you know, you're like, he's difficult to write for. I'm like, (laughs) come on, dude. We're talking about the superhero fatigue. Okay. I'm sorry. Yeah. That's a different topic (laughs) I was going off on. Thank you. Um, yeah, there's just, uh, you know, when you have how many street, I mean, have you ever counted and I'm talking to listeners, not you. How many streaming shows there? How many streaming shows there are? How many TV shows there are? How many films there are of certain things? Um, all ha- ha- concurrently happening at the same time. If you did that, I think you'd be surprised by how much there is. Now, I think another thing is comparing it to what was great, like every comparing everything to like Endgame. You know, great point. Great, great point. Now, I think that this this superhero fatigue, and I'm like you, I agree with it. I don't like it, but or, or, or I disagree with it. But <laughs> it is happening. Um, but but I can also kind of see why it's happening. Uh, after Endgame, I think, and you may have a difference of opinion, but that that's kind of when I started noticing a difference in myself in what I wanted to see. I felt. You know, and I've said this before, I think Endgame is a victim of its own success because it's so good and so yeah. built up, so built up perfectly. Each layer. Oh, yeah. yeah, go ahead. I was going to say it. I'm, I think, you know, you're saying I don't, it's not, it's not the victim so much as the whole genre. Right. Is a victim. Right. <clears throat> I think, I think some of it is also. That in the beginning, I don't think anyone could have anticipated how popular this movement would become. Um, and when I say the beginning, I'm talking about like fucking Iron Man, Sam Raimi, Spider Man, uh, Blade. You know, I mean, I'm mean, going back that far. You know, when it first started, that's what I. I mean, people say Iron Man is the birth. But they were making superhero movies before Iron Man. You know, they had yeah. Fantastic Four and X-Men and fucking, you know, several. Um, but they weren't as frequent. That I think that is a big part of it. I remember, you know, but even between Sam's Spider-Man films, you know, you had to wait a couple years for that shit. So that when it came around again you almost had forgot about it, right? You almost had had been like, oh, they tied that off, it's over. Because that was the thing about Sam's movies, um, is is he always made it, I felt, that it could either be tied off right there, or it could have a sequel. Which I think all directors should do. So, when you think about the amount of time between then and now, and I'm talking, that was fucking 2000. So you're talking over 20 years. They, they've done a lot, but it's become so diluted. Um, and I'm mm-hmm. talking about quality. 
you know, and and the problem becomes, yes, you may find those special up and coming writers that are going to become the next fucking Josh Whedon or uh, Kevin Feige or. I think it helps to have a standout look too. Like, you know, everything kind of looks the same. Absolutely. Except I think for like spider verse. Right. And, and I think that's why you make a great point when guardians came along. Right. And now it's straight up VFX. There's no fucking earth. Right. There's no fucking nor you can't shoot on location is what I'm saying. And then you just, they constantly had to up themselves each time leading up to end game. And, and then put everything into end game and it works so perfectly. But I think guardians does a good job of standing out with their colors. They use in there. Sure. Yeah. No, but that's what I'm saying. It, you know, that I, I was making an example of the films you're talking about that stood yeah. out because I'm just saying it's a side note, <laughs> right? And, and Suicide Squad, very similar to what you're saying. It was colorful. It was kind of lesser known characters. There, it wasn't as serious. You know, there was less VFX. There was more acting. Um, you know, that's I think the key is that there's just there's too many goddamn hands in the pot. You You're know, talking about the the non Will Smith Suicide Squad, right? Yes. Okay. Yes. <laughs> yes, I am. Um, you know, uh, again, I uh, sadly I do think, and even filmmakers I think are 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 experiencing this, where people approach them with a project that has some kind of superhero involved. They're just like, nope. Because they've seen the fucking, first of all, these studios don't treat these directors very fucking well. That's no secret. Um, you know, they don't leave them alone. They're always all over them about the content and to change it. Half the money they say that these directors blow, they've blown because they've asked for these stupid changes that aren't necessary. Yeah, so, blowers. Yeah, blows, blow, blow yeah. hards. Fuck you. Mm. Um, so anyway. I think we are going through superhero fatigue. I hope that it passes. I know it, it's going to take something. It's going to take something. To, to, I think. Well, I think uh, that one of the best things is like you were saying, is slowing it down. I agree, and and more time between stuff. Make people wait. You know, people are so. That's I think is the biggest problem, is that people are so scared of making the fans wait. They think that we're going to like revolt and be like, where's my fucking Batman? God damn it. That's not how I am with Matt Reeves. Right. I'm like, dude, take your fucking time. Please get it right. I care way more about that than how fast I see it. But I'm a 40 year old man. You're like, but you're like, get it done. We need the money. <laughs> no, no, I'm not. No, you're not. You're not that guy. Apparently that's that's where I'm wrong. So so well, last week we talked about this event, but we didn't know Matt was going to be there. Didn't know Jeff was going to be there. No, we knew Jeff. Oh, was oh, oh yeah, you're right. No, Matt. I I didn't think Matt was going to be there. My understanding yeah, from Earl was it was just Jeff. And um, we're Earl's, talking about a Hardy Boys meet and greet on February yes. 24th. This is happening at the time, or excuse me, the Elks Lodge in Ashland, Kentucky. 222 AK, 16th Street, Ashland. AK said uh, he does play music, too. Oh, really? Yeah. Okay. So, so maybe. Might see some tunes. Um, it's right off Greenup Avenue, uh, just when you get off the bridge in Ashland. Uh, the meet and greet is happening on February 24th. Does it have a price on there? I think he's figuring that out. Um, it's 11 to 2 p.m., <laughs> Uh, I said February 24th, right? February um, 24th, and the concert is February 24th. Okay, so, right. So that's that's the tricky thing. The concert with Matt and Jeff, I assume, is going to be taking place 7 p.m. at the Elks Lodge in Ashland. That's the 222 16th Street in Ashland, Kentucky. The meet and greet, I think, is taking place um, the at 24th. the 24th, the following day. So... Um, at the Time Warp Mall location. Right. Ashland Mall location. Right. 
Um, so yeah, Jeff, Jeff and Matt Hardy and Jeff has already done several like online videos, uh, talking about coming to Ashland and talking about Ashland. So, um, That's that's definitely a once in a lifetime guys. If you get a chance, you should definitely go get something signed or talk to them or get a picture taken or whatever. Again, Earl with time warp always coming through with the cool shit. We should go to the concert, dude. Maybe. Be my birthday present. You know, I don't like to go out. Um, another thing that Earl is uh, organizing is the Time Warp Gaming Con. This is uh, oh. coming up February 16th, and it will take place at the Boyd Convention and Arts Center, Christian. That's where we held the Bluegrass WrestleCon event. Uh, there will be a wrestling event there. Head Games is the name of it. The convention will open at 5 p.m. The bell time for the wrestling is 7 p.m. Get this. All tickets, five bucks. That's pretty kick-ass. Um, going to have gaming, role-playing, D&D, tables on demand. Uh, just a lot of fun stuff. Uh, brought to you by our friends at ACW Wrestling and, of course, Earl and the good folks over at Time Warp, which not only does you know, uh, collectibles and stuff like that, that I like, but they also do video games and like any video game you want. I don't know if you're, you ever think been they'll have video store. games for sale there. Absolutely. Yep. What about board games? You think they'll sell yep. board games? Yep. Yep. I think we'll have all that. Um, I don't, I don't have a list of the vendors, but I think that was the idea is that it would be, <laughs> that, that's how he presented. He's, he told me it'd be like a comic con, but video games. Cool. So anyway, uh, get more info at our Facebook, or you can head online, look up Time Warp Ashland, A-S-H-L-A-N-D, and uh, get all the information on that. That is all I got, Christian. Um, that'll be the events, and uh, that's all. What, what do you got? That'll be all. That'll be the events. Anyway, got we got it. Don't forget. Look us up online, podomatic.com, P-O-D-O-M-A-T-I-C.com, forward slash Geek Zip Podcast. I'm waiting on this snow to melt, dude. Hopefully, Christian will return to the cave next week. Um, again, if you are having snow out there and uh, very cold temperatures, please be safe. Uh, we appreciate you listening. We appreciate you watching, and we'll see you next week. Yo! Thank you for listening to the Geek Zip Podcast. Listen on iTunes, Spotify, Podomatic, Facebook, Amazon Prime. Follow the Geek Zip Podcast on Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram. Search Geek Zip Podcast.